Now, if my Muslim friends were here, and I invited some, I invited Hassan Shibli, who used to be a friend of mine until he went over to CARE, which is a terrorist organization. And I tell all my former Muslim friends, if you go to CARE, you become an enemy of the state and an enemy of Tom Trento, an ideological enemy. It's that simple. Hassan Shibli, I understand, was working his little scam with, uh, with the city of Venice. They do this all the time all over the country. When one of us speaks someplace, they go in, play the victim card, and try to get the administration in a particular municipality ultimately to do sensitivity training. CARE is a terrorist organization. They are Hamas. I'm going to establish evidence tonight to show that and prove that point. Um, right now, these are the six main Muslim Brotherhood operatives that advise President Obama on a daily basis. These are vile individuals that are anti-American. They have been placed in these high levels by this administration. I mean, these guys are deeply involved. But I wanna, I wanna draw attention for today. We can do briefs on each one of these, extensive briefs. I wanna look at Imam Mohammed Majid, second from the right. We're gonna look at him a little bit today. And became the Imam in, in, uh, in Dulles, the uh, all area Dulles network. Uh, got involved with Dar al-Hijra, the mosque in Falls Church, which uh, Anwar al was in. It's called the Jihad Mosque because it had a lot of jihadis. Anwar al was the American um, imam who was doing prayer services at the Capitol as he was managing the 9-11 terrorists at the same time. And uh, Anwar al finally took off and uh, a drone got him a few years ago out in, uh, in Yemen. But Mohammed Majid is a Muslim brother, hardcore, um, cultural jihadi, and um, he is deeply involved in, uh, in the, this administration. These are two Republicans, and we call these guys out all over the place. Grover Norquist, who's a hero on tax reform for the Republican Party, he is a devious, diabolical, Muslim Brotherhood operator in the United States of America. And we, we say that everywhere we go and we challenge him. And uh, he has hurt this country tremendously by bringing people like Alamudi and others into government placed as agents of influence. And Suhail Khan is his right hand man that we have busted open in, in different meetings and, and, uh, and videotaped him saying stuff that he regretted saying, but the umbrella organization for the various four, five, six hundred Muslim Brotherhood entities in the United States. It started back in 1963, that organization, and it's headed by, I'm going to show you in a second, none other than President Obama's number one Muslim advisor, Imam Mo Mohammed Majid. He runs a terrorist organization. That organization has contributed zero, zero to the United States of America. It is a cultural terrorist organization. It is a kinetic terrorist organization. Many real life terrorists have grew up in that and are in this. He put up $21 million. His name is Yosef Nada. Nice guy, except <laughs> he's the financier for the Muslim Brotherhood worldwide. Uh, he has been um, indicted by the United States as being a terrorist and he's still fighting some of that. In 2001, there was a raid on his offices, and a document was found called The Project. Now understand, he's the financier for the Muslim Brotherhood. Project was written in 1982. Uh, the document, though, it doesn't contain the words Muslim Brotherhood. It is the outline for the plan for Muslims to infiltrate and defeat the West and the United States. This was in the document found in Nada's house, Nada's the financier of ISNA. ISNA's headed up by President Obama's right-hand man, Imam Mohammed Maji. Evidence that ISNA and the Muslim Brotherhood and CARE are terrorists. That's where this information came out. Infiltrating and taking over existing Muslim organizations and realigning them towards the Brotherhood's collective goals. Using deception to mask the intended goals of Islamist actions involving ideological committed Muslims and democratically elected institutions on all levels in the West, including government, NGOs, 
This is an influence operation. I work with a lot of former CIA people. This is what they do in other countries. This is what's happening here by the Muslim Brotherhood. This is called subversion, and it's a violation of federal law to do this stuff. Inflaming violence and keeping Muslims living in the West in a jihad frame of mind. Supporting jihad movements across the... How the hell is this jihad word being used? You are dummies. Dummies. If anybody tells you jihad means anything other than a, than a religious war to kill other people, these are the leaders articulating a militaristic doctrine. Supporting jihad movements across the Muslim world through preaching propaganda, personnel funding, technical and operational support. Making the Palestinian cause a global wedge issue. Don't be leftists buy into this. They want that sort of fester. So the 15, 18, 19, 20-year-old frustrated Islamic kids, men, can fight and kill as directed by Osama bin Laden, Anwar al and the others. Adopting the total liberation of Palestine from Israel and the creation of Islamic State is a keystone in the plan for global Islamic domination. Instigating a constant campaign to incite hatred by Muslims against Jews. It's in their DNA. And rejecting any discussions of conciliation or coexistence with them. Their doctrine does not allow it. Actively creating jihad terror cells in Palestine. Linking the terrorist act activities in Palestine with the global terror movement. Collecting sufficient funds to indefinitely perpetu perpetuate and support jihad around the world. This is evidence in a trial. There's 2,200 mosques in America. There were only 1,000 when 9-11 hit. The Saudis had a building campaign, built another 1,200 since 9-11. 85% of those are funded by the Saudis. 85% are practicing by doctrine, sub subversion in their mosques. Factually, we have the evidence. Hamas, their charter says that they're one of the wings of the Muslim Brotherhood, and they will exist until they obliterate Israel. Uh, back to the Muslim Brothers. How are we in this situation? We, these guys have the ear of the president. This is Mohammed, Imam Mohammed Majid. That's the president with Imam Mohammed Majid. That's the president with Mohammed Majid and you know some other friends at one of the events. That's the president with who? Uma Abedin. Muslim Brotherhood Memorandum was written in 1991, discovered in 2004. Another raid on a Muslim's house in, uh, in Virginia. A cop is at the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, a big bridge. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to be too sharp to notice this, but there's, <laughs> there's a, two people at the base of the bridge. A woman is in complete niqab, and they're taking pictures of the structure of the bridge. The state trooper goes, uh, I don't know about this. So he goes to have a little talk with them. Turns out that um, El, El Barassi, Mohammed El Barassi is his name. He's, he's, uh, there's a warrant for him out of Chicago. So they pull him in, and the FBI says, we want to take a look at this, this guy. They go into his house in um, Annandale, Virginia, 2004, not too long ago. And uh, they go in his basement, start knocking around. FBI's tricky. They find a sub-basement in Annandale, Virginia, 2004. Go in a sub-basement. Over 10,000 documents. The archives of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States of America found 2004 in Annandale, Virginia. They became the basis for this suit against all these Muslim groups like CARE, which are terrorist organizations. I'll show you that. The FBI and, and the law enforcement agencies submitted a small portion of these documents. There's tons of them. This administration is letting them ice. They don't want to do anything with them because the advisors to the president on all things Muslim, President Obama, if you want to have good relations with Muslims, we can't be prosecuting Muslims. It's not going to work. Now listen what was found in the Muslim Brotherhood 18-page document. The project was 12 pages. I showed you two pages of 12. I'm showing you one paragraph of 18. The exact detailed plans for taking over the United States of America are in both documents. If you read that, you go, wow, these people are serious. And one was written in 82, one was written in um, 91. And you go, they've been doing this for 30 years. 
The process of settlement is a civilization jihadist process. With all the word means, the Ikhwan, the Muslim Brotherhood, must understand that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating peacefully and destroying peacefully the Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house by their hands, your hands, and the hands of the believers so that it is eliminated and God's religion, Islam, is made victorious over all religions. This is the unindicted co-conspirators, a list of the unindicted co-conspirators, the, uh, the handful that came out of the Holy Land Foundation trial where five were found guilty, five people. Uh, five of them were locked up. They're doing for, uh, 15 to 60 years. Then there's just a few more names. 330 people and organizations. Unindicted co-conspirators being what not really being watched by this administration. And uh, one of the organizations is the Islamic Society of North America, ISNA, that is run by him. Remember where, where he lives? In the White House? He heads an organization that is viewed as a connection to terrorism funding Hamas to kill Jews. He's the head of it. In what sane world should he not be in jail or certainly not hold the position of counselor to the President of the United States? On its face, on the facts. This guy, I invited my friend Hassan Shibley here tonight. Hassan, you here? He heads up care for the state of Florida. He was just awarded Chapter of the Year by Nihad Awad, a cultural terrorist, a terrorist supporter. He heads up care national. So Florida is the best care chapter in the country. <sighs> Give yourselves a hand. Hassan, lovely guy, lawyer, all of that, very sweet, very deferential, very smart. He is a terrorist. He, he supports terrorism. He says he doesn't, all of that. But his organization does. He's connected with his organization. He heads his organization. He lives and breathes with these people. He cannot exonerate himself from the dirt that's all around him by putting on a nice hat and talking very sweetly. So he's a dangerous individual for the state of Florida. And a federal judge, because CARE tried to get their name removed from this unindicted co-conspirator status. They went to court. They spent a lot of money. And the judge said, no way. You are Hamas. The best way to understand CARE today, Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE is Hamas.